An understanding of what is a very complicated picture of German heavy tank development in World War II is incomplete without consideration of the program by Krupp as a rival design to the mouse from Dr. Porsche. Although Porsche was the overall design lead for the mouse, he was not responsible for the turret or armor, which were Krupp projects. Krupp had some very different ideas to Porsche on how a heavy tank should look and be protected, and, whilst they worked together on the mouse, they were also rival over whose design would better suit the needs of the military and get into production. Dr. Porsche's design would eventually weigh in at around 200 tons, but Krupp's was a smaller vehicle with removable side armor and nearly 70 tons lighter. Whilst Dr. Porsche's design would eventually win out over Krupp's, the Krupp design is arguably a better design and far more practical for production as it reused off-the-shelf components being used in the Tiger II and Panther. Welcome to a new Tank Encyclopedia voice article covering this most unknown of German super heavy tanks. If you like such content, please do consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. The funds gathered there help us run the website and the YouTube channel and mostly go towards the beautiful illustrations you see with every article and every video. The vehicle which would later form the foundation of the E100 started life in a conversation about the 150-ton Mauschen project which took place on 11th September 1942. Here, the representative from Krupp expressed that Krupp was interested in making its own conceptual rival design for a 150-ton vehicle. In order to do this though, they needed information on engines and transmissions. Promised that a 1000 to 1200 horsepower version of the HL 230P30 was possible by supercharging, Krupp's idea was delayed for four weeks to a meeting of the Panzerkommission on 17th November 1942. This gave Krupp four weeks to develop their own rival 150 ton Panzer concept. At that meeting, Krupp presented a conceptual design for their 150 ton vehicle but it was short of a full proposal and the decision on whether to accept Krupp's design or the one from Porsche for the 150 ton class Panzer was delayed after the 17th November meeting until the end of the year. This would allow Krupp a little more time to submit a finished proposal for consideration. Just for added confusion, the tank in question was also being known as the Mouse, even though it is very different from the well-known Porsche Mouse. For clarity, in this article, the mouse designation will only be used for the Porsche mouse unless otherwise stated. The first design for this new 150 ton vehicle submitted by Krupp had to meet a set of requirements and one of those was ground pressure. Originally, a maximum ground pressure of 0.8 kg per centimeter square was permitted for the vehicle by the Panzerkommission. This, in turn, dictated to Krupp the layout of their design and had led to the adoption of a central turret on the vehicle. When shortly afterwards this ground pressure allowance was increased, Krupp changed their design to switch to a rear mounted turret design. Although this had brought the ground pressure up to slightly exceed the new maximum, some additional minor changes managed to squeeze this design just within their criteria. It was the outline of a vehicle in drawing W1671 which met with approval. Although the weight of the vehicle was already expected to grow from 150 to 155 tons and by the end of November 1942 to 170 tons. Further, although it was to use the same drivetrain as the Henschel Tiger, including the same engine, the HL230, which had been promised as being able to deliver 1000 horsepower, it was now estimated to be able to provide just 800 horsepower. However, in his 1945 Allied Intelligence Debriefing interview, von Heidekampf was clear that even supercharged, this engine could not achieve even 900 horsepower. The next major step in this vehicle's development was a meeting with Oberbaurat Kurt Kniekampf on 1st December 1942. Here, the 150-ton vehicle being designed by Krupp and being referred to as the Mouse was discussed. It is at this meeting that the two styles of tank Krupp was looking at were made clear. The first, with the turret at the back and the engine in front, 
had a high ground pressure and was 3.7 meters wide. This layout produced a much higher ground pressure than was achieved by putting the engine behind the turret and presumably offered a greater degree of protection to account for why it was otherwise larger and heavier. The alternative layout offered a much reduced ground pressure and a narrower hull with the engine at the back and the turret in the middle. The side armor though could be considered to be inferior to the other design as, apart from the thickness and shape of the armor, on this version it had to be removable. This removability was created by a series of hollow armored boxes, which could be lifted on or off the hull by means of a small crane. Their removal allowed the vehicle width to be reduced to 3.07 meters, meaning it would fit within the standard German rail gauge. It is not that the first design was unshippable by rail though, just that it would greatly impede other traffic on the railways as it would mean that no traffic could pass in the opposing direction. The advantages of using Raupenkasten was obvious, but it came at the price of using a technology which had not been produced before or tested. This layout, albeit a little unusual, met with approval from Vaproof 6, except that the drivetrain was now going to be changed to share commonality with Henschel's Tiger 2 instead of the Tiger 1. This would improve spares availability, support and production, but meant that the low and ground contact left of the track had to be lengthened slightly. At the same time as forcing the tank to get longer and have a longer ground contact length by requiring a new drivetrain, the contrary was also proposed. Namely, it was proposed to actually shorten the ground contact length for the track and instead adopt a wider track, bringing the width of the vehicle to 3.27 meters, the safe limit of width to stay within rail limits for opposing traffic on the rails. This option though also meant reducing some weight too, and that meant reducing some of the armor being considered and not by a little. Instead of the 150 ton tank project which was currently weighing in at 170 tons before being made even longer, the proposed vehicle was going to have nearly 50 tons taken off to get to 130 tons. A loss of some armor was considered an acceptable sacrifice to be made in order to avoid having to design and build a whole new heavyweight steering system. Now at 130 tons, it could use the same Lenk Getriebe L801 from the Tiger II and still achieve 22 to 25 km per hour, even with the Maybach HL230 only being able to deliver 700 horsepower of the 1000 originally promised. Vaproof's suggestions appear to have saved Krupp from descending even more rapidly into a vicious downward spiral of the weight going up and up. Not only did Vaproof 6 help to rationalize the design by removing the need for a new steering system and the elusive engine of 1000 horsepower or higher, but they had also effectively dropped plans for a 150 ton class Panzer in the process. The new concept was to have this vehicle weigh in at around 130 tons and Krupp were duly instructed to redraw W1674 to accommodate the changes needed to make this lighter tank with a lot of parts commonality with Tiger II. This was ready by the start of December 1942. On top of the already significant weight reduction from 170 tons to just 130 tons, the vehicle still needed to shed some weight. Here the problem was the turret. As a percentage of the overall vehicle weight, it was simply out of proportion to the weight of the hull and a heavy turret produced additional problems with the means of traversing and balancing it. Vaproof 6 were therefore interested in a new design of a turret with a further reduction in weight. No figures were provided as no work appears to have been done in this regard, but assuming that a figure closer to the 20% of vehicle weight as represented by the Tiger, this would give a turret closer to 25 to 30 tons. A couple more design changes which came out of this meeting between Krupp and Vaproof 6 showed that this new 130 ton vehicle could not use everything from the Tiger II but was, on the whole, satisfactory for further development. There were two mutually supporting desires for getting this design into production as soon as possible. First, Vaproof 6 wanted this heavy tank available as soon as possible, and secondly, 
Krupp wanted to get the vehicle ready before Porsche's mouse design. Moving to off-the-shelf components for their design, such as adopting elements from the Tiger II and Panther, would assist in this work, reducing the time taken for design and testing. When Krupp's representatives met with a representative of the Munitions Ministry on 8th December, they were in agreement with this plan. The 130-ton Mauschen was therefore halfway to approval and was only waiting on final approval from Reich Minister Albert Speer to get the go-ahead, representing one of the fastest design processes for a heavy tank which can be identified, just three months from concept to design and approval. Such a success, though, lasted just one week, with information coming on 15th December that Speer had not approved production. The 130-ton Panzer design from Krupp was cancelled. Only Dr. Porsche's mouse design would continue, as a decision on that vehicle had already been made by Hitler on 2nd December. In a last effort to get production authorized, Krupp's representatives met with Vaproof 6 on 17th December 1942 to seek answers as to why their design had been stopped. Vaproof 6 reiterated that they liked the design of this vehicle but that, as the Porsche design had already been authorized, Krupp's project had to stop. Bearing in mind their experience with two rival Tiger tank projects, they were anxious not to repeat the same situation a second time. Krupp was not to be dissuaded so easily and went to meet directly with Speer, seeking this contract. At this time, the project was being known as the 130-ton Tiger Mouse. It was exactly that, a hybrid from the Mauschen program using Tiger components and weighing 130 tons, and at the same time confirming that the plans to reduce the turret weight below the 45.5-ton design had not been progressed with. Production of the tank as a decision was reconsidered, and the question of approval was put to Hitler on 5th January 1943. Then, Hitler again accepted the Porsche design, and the Krupp plan was dead. Right from day one in its life, this project required a powerful engine to propel its 150-ton bulk. At that 11th September 1942 meeting where Krupp's representative had outlined nothing more than the company's desire to be allowed to develop their own concept in this class, they were informed that Maybach were promising to be able to deliver a 1000 horsepower version of their HL230 P30 engine, the HL234. This engine was in fact a variant of their HL230 which was modified with the removal of the turbocharger, replacing it with a supercharger and modifications to the fuel system to deliver it at a higher pressure. It would also have to run on special fuel. Using even a modified HL230P30 would make this new tank much easier to maintain and sustain in the field and in production, as that engine was already in use. This was not the only area in which commonality of parts was considered. The next area was in the drivetrain. Rather than adopting a bespoke system for this tank, it would instead opt for using components from the Henschel Tiger. Although with a power to weight ratio of just 4.5 horsepower per ton, this tank would be able to achieve just 20 km per hour. One thing which would differ from the Henschel Tiger's drivetrain, though, was the steering system. If the design had retained the steering unit from Henschel as used on the Tiger, it would be limited to just 13 km per hour. So a brand new system was needed allowing for speeds up to 25 km per hour. This was undergoing development by Zan Radfabrik, Maybach, AEG and Voith, working together on a new heavyweight hydromechanical transmission and steering system. Unlike the mouse which adopted an electrical transmission, this design from Krupp was to go for a more conventional transmission, although there were several to consider. Krupp's preference was for a newly designed unit, either mechanical or electromechanical, from Zan Radfabrik which would have to be able to deal with up to 1,200 horsepower and a top speed of 30 km per hour for a tank weighing 170 tons. On 1st December 1942, Vaproof 6 approved Krupp's design, with the proviso that the drivetrain elements were changed to share commonality with those of the Tiger II 
instead of the Tiger 1. This meant making the hull a little longer. Following calculations in December on the new steering system, a 130-ton basis for the tank was adopted instead of the 170 tons it had grown to. An Olvar Schaltgetriebe transmission was combined with the L801 steering system from the Tiger II and Maybach HL230 engine. The design work, which included the use of 32 800mm diameter road wheels, produced a design superior to the Porsche Mouse. Although, as of the start of December 1942, the 130-ton Mauschen would be hampered by the limits of the Maybach 700 horsepower engine, it had delivered the advantage of making the design much simpler than the alternative plan, which required a whole new steering system. The reduction in weight from 170 to 130 tons had delivered the required improvements over the mouse, with the problem being a loss in armor protection, although the protection was still considered to be acceptable. The improved performance Maybach was promised to be ready and available from September 1943 onwards, meaning there would be 9 months or so in which to finish the rest of the design work. This is despite the promise of that 1000 horsepower performance and even 1100 horsepower performance from the engine never being reached. And any such increase in power would also require a new steering system and final drive to cope with the stress. One key element of the 130 ton Tiger Mouse design would be the design of the turret. It is commonly assumed online that the 130 ton Tiger Mouse would use the Mouse 2 E100 style turret with the flat front, but this is not correct. The design for that turret started in March 1944, one year after the Tiger Mouse had been cancelled as an idea in favour of the Porsche Mouse. This is confirmed by the fact that, when in 1945 the Allies captured Adler's works, they found many files had been burned. Under the supervision, drawing 021A38300 was redrawn from the burnt scraps of the original. That drawing showed the original mouse-shaped turret from the Type 205, dating back to the end of December 1942, January 1943, rather than the Mouse 2 term, which was the turret intended for the E100. The reason for this is fairly clear, the Adler workers were simply working off of the leftovers from the Tiger Mouse program, and this was the Krupp turret shown on that hull. This accounts for why the turret retains so many early mouse features, such as the side viewports, rear crew hatch and the lack of coincidence rangefinder. That turret weighed in excess of 50 tons and was abandoned long before the E100 started. It was later found that the E100 hull, in fact, could not mount such a heavy turret. That was why they had to lighten the mouse to term to make it work on that tank, down to just 35 tons. The turret for the 130 ton Tiger Mouse, therefore, is essentially the same as the one depicted on the Type 205, with the early mouse features, such as the side viewports and crew escape hatch in the turret rear. The 130 ton Tiger Mouse cannot, in fact, even be suggested to mount the mouse turret. The design of the Tiger Mouse ended on 3rd January and design work amending the turret design shown on the Type 205 did not begin until 12th January. Certainly had the Tiger Mouse been selected over the Porsche Mouse, the turret would have been modified, but the Tiger Mouse was not selected and therefore did not receive these considerations. The fact that over a year later the Adler workers were working from designs of the Tiger Mouse from Krupp, which still had this pre-January 1943 mouse-style turret simply confirms this. Although Krupp's design had been better in some ways than the rival mouse design from Dr. Porsche, it had not met with favour from Hitler. Porsche's design had been approved for production on 3rd January 1943 and the 130-ton Krupp Tiger Mouse was not. At the time, the project was over, but the idea of another heavy tank in place of the Porsche mouse was not. Ernst Niekampf would, without informing Krupp, give their design over to the firm of Adler to complete a simple experimental version. This was part of his attempt to develop a newly rationalized program of German tank development with vehicles based on common components 
and delineated by weight class and roles. That work was conducted in secret and Krupp were not even aware of this until the following spring, over a year after being officially turned down. The 130-ton Tiger Mouse was resurrected only as a 100-ton experimental chassis, though there were changes made to the original design as well as to how it would look. The Tiger Mouse was already dead, but the E100 which was to follow it was actually built, proving that Krupp's design did, after all, have substantial merit, and that perhaps it was it and not the Porsche Mouse which should have been selected for production, even if both tanks were a dead end for a country struggling with the problems of mass manufacturing and how to field increasingly heavy tanks.